they became a very successful live act. But for some reason, they couldn't sell enough albums. They made four albums with Island Records. And it was, just wasn't working. For some reason, people were packing out the gigs, but not buying the album. And they eventually decided to split up. And David Bowie heard about this. And he said, you mustn't do that. You're a great band. I'm going to give you a song. Mm. And he sent them a song called Suffragette City. <laughs> and they turned it down. <laughs> and uh, they're probably quite right to, because if we're going to have a song, it's going to be one that can be a hit. And he said, OK, no problem. I'll, I'll, do, I'll make another song for you. Now, I don't know whether he actually wrote it overnight mm -hmm. or whether he actually had that song in his back pocket. But the next time they saw him, he said, I'm going to play you a song. And he sat down and played his guitar and he sang All the Young Dudes. And everyone's jaw dropped and said, you're going to give us this song? He said, yeah. And they all knew it was going to be a hit yeah. straight away. So then they were really off and running. And that's when Motley Hoople really were playing the big halls. And it was just after that that I joined them. So it was like, again, you see, I'm a lazy lazy bugger. Paying Jews in the clubs now. I'll just wait till the band's big and then I'll join them. <laughs> um, I, apologies about, about there are some holes in my armory and my research because there's just so so much stuff to, to, to get through. But Mott the Hoople, I mean, I was, you know, it, when, when I think when I thought about Morgan Fisher, uh, I think about Morgan Fisher, I think about Mott the Hoople. It's the first thing I kind of think of. It was such a significant part, really, uh, of, of your of your career. Um, yeah. So you you knew I was going to ask you that. It's interesting. You knew you knew it was going to be hit as soon as soon as you as as soon as you you heard it. Um, what was your kind of friendship with the, with the rest of the band? You know, did we did, did you become sort of you know re, did you have a good sort of camaraderie? Absolutely, yeah. The best band I've ever been in. I mean, they'd already been together four years and uh, obviously had their own thing going, and their keyboard player left. And so I was the new boy and I joined them initially just as a sort of sideman for a, an upcoming American tour. And uh, just as soon as I started working with them, I had a great time. I just saw what a lovely bunch of blokes, you know. And there was very few arguments. They were very welcoming. Loads of fun on the road. Um, I formed a very close attachment to Buffin, the drummer, and Overend, the bass player. Okay. Who were an incredibly good rhythm section and uh so we went through two other bands the first was mott after mott the hooper we changed to mott then we changed to british lions yes and we got john fiddler from medicine head in as our singer yes. and uh so you know i had a really close rapport with especially those two guys buffin and pete and uh yeah just a fantastic band to be with definitely uh, what's your rela relationship? What was your relationship with with Ian Hunter uh, later on? You know, did did you sort of very good? Yeah, I mean, once he, you know, because he left the band suddenly yeah. out of the blue, yeah. which is rather shocking. As singers do. Uh, well, it does happen, but um, I kind of forgave him, yeah. and uh, but I didn't see him for a long, long time, and he moved to America. But we got together two years ago to do some reunion shows. Oh, great. And it was just like old times, loads of fun. And uh, I just saw him, you know, as an older man now, I saw I saw him for what a great guy he is, you know. Yeah. Really down to earth, no nonsense. Good guy, very creative, very prolific. Because when we we're, when we're in Mother Hoople, yeah. he, he was 10 years older than us. Okay. So the band were basically in our 20s and he was in his 30s. That makes a difference. Mm -hmm. Well, when you're in your 50s and he's in his 60s, not such a difference anymore. Mm. You know, you're more on equal equal level. Mm. And I, I've gotten on really well with him ever since we've done the reunions. Um, with, uh, I was going to say that the book he wrote, which I, I, everyone tells me, you have to, I have to read that book. Diary yeah. of a Rock and Roll Star. Yeah. It, it, would, would you also suggest I read it? Yeah. Absolutely. It's the best. Great. It's the best, it's the funniest, it's the most sincere. Okay. Written from the inside while he's on the road. It's you like can feel it. Yeah. You know? 
like a day-to-day -day is that right uh, yeah something like that yeah yeah it is basically uh, and it was an incredible tour it was the all the all the young dudes tour of america basically wow. and they he met so many people like frank zappa and keith moon and i, I don't know who else but it's just a fantastic story it's been reissued about three times already mm. and the latest reissue which is a nice hardback with extra photos and it's got a um it's got an introduction by Johnny Depp. Okay. Who's a huge fan, apparently. Yeah. And, uh, and so, you know, treat yourself to the, the new version. I always remember living once bit and twice shy. I used to play it. We used to go to a cafe for breakfast when I was a kid. I used to yeah. I jukebox all the time, you know, back to back. You know. Oh, I still think that's one of Ian's great songs that he, he's done since he left Mother Hoople. Hello. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Um, talking about uh, John Fiddler, uh, I was I was going to interview John, but I, I don't think he's been very well just recently. Um, nothing really major, but he, he was having some stuff going on. So, but um, but I was because I was interviewing him, I listened to a load of his stuff with Medicine Head, and uh, yeah. I'd forgotten how great it was. Great song, brilliant. Right? Oh, brilliant. Yeah, so many. He wrote several hits, and it's just everything's so warm and funky and organic and yeah. just lovable. Yeah, it's kind of towards kind of reggae, kind of vibe, a bit, bit of dubby. It's just uh, quite yeah. um, quite hippie-ish, you know, hippie-ish reggae stuff, but just really catchy and, and, and really just great song songwriting, really, I think. And he's still doing it. And some of the, he's had a couple of singles out recently. I played on one, and they're great. I love them. You so look for them. Stuff, don't you? Sorry? You play on lots of stuff still, don't you? Oh yeah, I want to do more. I'm, I'm, I'm here and I'm available. I'm at home, you know. I'm not going anywhere. So, so, so spread the word. I'm here for sessions anytime. That's what I picked up on it, and I might be totally wrong, but looking at looking at your website, uh, it was only yesterday I was looking at it, and it, it seems to be that your is your spirit. You know, let's let's you know, if we like something, you know, it doesn't yeah. matter how, how kind of. I suppose how famous you either like it or you don't you're into it or you're not is that, is that right or absolutely it's just something i like i mean i've played with some bands for no you know i don't need a payment if they can't pay me i want to do it anyway there's a there's a really good irish band up and coming now called keely 